What's up guys, Theros Kozin here. In this video, we're taking bad code and we're turning it into senior level React code. I'm super excited. I really hope that you are too. There's a ton to learn in this video, so make sure to watch and watch until the end. And yeah, let's begin. Cool, so this is the app that we're gonna be looking at today. It's called Evolve. And to the best of my knowledge, this is a sort of productivity app. This was sent to me on Discord. Essentially, this user wanted me to look at the code of his app, review it, give some tips, so that he could implement this and turn it into a senior level React application. This is the code for this app. There's the front end folder, which holds all of the files related to React. That's where we're gonna be spending all of our time in this video. And then there's the SRC folder, which is the back end for this, and that's written in Java. Cool, so let's begin. Let's look at some actual code. So let's open the front end folder. Let's go into SRC and then let's open up app.jsx. This app file is essentially the root of this entire application. This is where a lot of the things are set up like this auth provider here and also where the roots are set up to kind of be able to render the different parts of the application. Now, the first thing that I would comment on in this page, the first thing that kind of strikes me as obvious is that if you look at all of these roots here, there's a lot of repeated code, right? Like every single root, take this survey, for example, every single root has a path of type string, has an element property, which gives it the actual element to render. And then if this root requires authentication, which most of them do, it's rendering, wrapping it in this require auth component, and then passing the login path to, I assume, redirect to. Now, this is bad because you're essentially writing a lot of the same code over and over again unnecessarily. Instead, a better approach, which is actually what I'm going to suggest now, is to create a list of all of the roots, give them all of these properties, and then just map over them inside of the component. That's gonna make the code a lot cleaner and a lot easier to understand. So we're gonna come here and do const roots, and then that's gonna be equal to an array. And then each array is gonna have an object, and this object is going to have the properties of that root. For example, it's going to have the path, right? Which in this case, it's going to be home. Let's take home first, for example. Let's just put, do this and then put home here. Then what else? We have the element, which is going to be an element. So we'll do element. And that is going to be, in this case, this home component here, like so. And then it's going to be, actually, you know what? Let's not do this. Let's do home like this, because we're gonna wanna use it in the actual code, so that's fine. And then our last property is going to be requires auth, right? So we're gonna put here requires auth, and then that's going to be true because the home requires true. So I've skipped a little bit into the future. I just added all of these roots to this roots array here. And then what we can do is we can just come here where our roots are, and then we can do roots.map, and then we're gonna go for every root, and that is going to return. And let's now think about what we actually want to return. We want to return a root, right? Which is gonna be the same thing we're returning here. Then this path is going to be equal to root.path, right? Because every single one of these has a path here, right? We're essentially putting the same code, just organizing it a bit differently. Then we have the element, which is gonna be here, right? Either the element or we're gonna do this. If root dot requires auth, we're gonna actually let Copilot do everything for us. So if the root requires auth, we're gonna render this require auth, and then we're gonna render our element here, and then close this. Otherwise, we are going to render only the element of the root because it does not require auth. If I save this, it should be fine. Then to make this error go away, we actually need to provide the key. So the key is gonna be the root.path. And the reason why we can do this is because we know that in our actual list, every single path is going to be unique. There's not gonna be two roots that are gonna have the same path. So we can use the path as our key in our map. And with this, we can actually get rid of all of this code for all of these other roots. So I'm just gonna come here and delete all of them. And then what we're left with is something that is functionally equivalent, right? It's doing the same exact thing. The only difference is that now we've only written this code once. Cool, now let's move on to a different file because this one is kind of done. There's nothing more to cover in it. The one we're gonna look at is in this components here. Let's look at purpose driver survey, which I assume is a survey of some kind, I'm not really sure. And then the first thing that, you know, looking at this code, the first thing that kind of is obvious to me is first of all, this auth header here, looks to be using this hook. I think this is from React AuthKit. Unfortunately, I haven't used React AuthKit, so I'm not sure how that works. But if you look at this cookie value here, right, it's looking at document.cookie, and it's finding the cookie that starts with auth, which indicates to me that this might be the auth token that is getting from the cookie, which then means that I'm not really sure what this auth header does here. Like, why do we have an auth header? 
but then we're also looking at the auth cookie. Also, this cookie value here is a very generic name for a variable. It's not really obvious what this actually means. And if you look at the code, it's being sent here to the back end as the access token. So this is essentially the authentication token, right? So I would rename this and all of its occurrences to auth token for it to be a little bit more descriptive into what it actually is and what it does. Then if you look at this function here, actually, I don't like it. So we're fetching based off of this URL, which is hard coded as a string. And then we're doing plus and then new URL search params. Did you know that you can do something like this? You can do const URL equals new URL. You can actually create a URL object from JavaScript and you can do the string here, survey dot link PD guidance. And then that can be your base URL. And then you can do const params equals new search params, right? And then actually, sorry, it's URL search params. And then you can give all of the things that you had here. So like access token, you can give it here. And then you can do url.search params equals params. And then your fetch here, you can just literally do your URL. And then this is a lot cleaner and it's, you know, it's just a little bit better. And then if you scroll down, there's this piece of code, which is really interesting, but also really bad at the same time. So this is a use effect that is actually running this function above this generate URL function, but it's doing a little bit of extra magic, if you will, or I should say it's trying to do something because actually it's doing nothing. So first what this effect is doing is it's setting ignore to false. And then on the next line, if ignore is false, it's going to call this function generate URL. And then in the return in the cleanup function of this effect, it's going to set ignore to true. Now, the thing is you've given an empty dependency array, which means that this use effect is only ever going to run once. It's going to run when the component is mounted and then it's going to run when the component is unmounted, which means that if it runs only once, your ignore here on that run is going to be false. And then it's going to trigger this piece of code here, which is going to run your generate URL function. And then in the cleanup function, it's only going to ever run once. It's going to set ignore to true, but then there's no further dependency to be run because this component is going to be unmounted. And so this effect is going to be destroyed. So essentially the fact that you had ignore here false and then setting it to true is actually doing nothing. So you're better off just removing it and then removing this condition and then just calling generate URL like this and maybe even format this a little bit just so it's cleaner, right? Cool, so that's this page done. Then let's move on to survey because I wanna look how survey differs from purpose driver survey, which we were on before. And just right off the bat, you can see that this is a lot of repeated code and this might actually be the same code, right? We have this cookie value here, we have this unused auth header and this generate URL function. And let me see, is it doing it? Yes, it is. It's also doing this ignore crap, if I'm being honest, when it's actually not doing anything. So what I would do at this point, because this function is being used in two different places now, like I said before, if it's to be used in multiple places, I would extract this into its own custom hook, maybe even use this cookie value here in that same hook and just get everything that way so that we don't have to worry about it. And I think that would actually make this code a lot better and these two components, these two pages, a lot smaller. So let's actually do it. Let's not just talk about it. Let's actually implement the things that we're talking about. I'm gonna create a new folder here called hooks and then inside of it, I'm going to create a new file and that's gonna be use auth, no, use generate URL dot TS, actually dot JS because this is a JavaScript project. And then here I'm gonna do export const use generate URL. And then for now I'm gonna put it empty and I'm literally going to take all of this code, even this cookie value here, because as you're gonna see, this cookie value is only used here. So I'm gonna take all of this code, come back here, paste it here, right? And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna do return and then two things, generate URL and then cookie value. And actually just like we did before, I'm going to rename this to auth token. So auth token, right? And then we're gonna do this this way. So now we have created a custom hook, right? Called use generate URL that has the auth token, which is the same logic as we had before, and also has the function generate URL, which we can now use. And now I'm seeing here that we have an error that set URL is not defined because in here we are using this here, right? So we're gonna do move this over here as well. We're gonna create our state variable here at the top because you can put state inside of custom hooks, right? That's the beauty of it. Why is it not importing? Import use state from react. That should work, 
right? And then we have URL. This set URL is now going to work fully. And then we're also going to return this URL here just so that we have everything else just the same as we had in the actual component. Then in the component, we can first get rid of the function and all of the state here that we had before. And then we can even move this use effect, right? We actually don't need to put it here. We can put it inside of here directly. And then actually that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to just take this use effect. We're gonna take it here, put it here, remove this ignore stuff. Cause as we said, it's not needed, right? So we're gonna get rid of this, get rid of this. We're actually going to do the same exact thing. We're going to define the function inside of this use effect. We're going to import use effect from React. So use effect from React. And actually, I don't know why there's no formatting here. So forgive me for the formatting. It's a bit ugly, but it is what it is. And then, yeah, this generate URL hook is doing the exact same thing. And we can just come here and do use generate URL and then get rid of all of these and then maybe fix the formatting man why is this formatting so bad we can clear all of these imports and then oh this should return the url fair enough so we should do const url and then for now that's not going to work but what we can do is we can return the url from our hook so we can come here and do return url so this hook is going to do exactly the same logic as we, we had before with the only difference that is going to return this hook which means that we have access to it here in this component and we can pass it here to our actual iframe which again i'm not i haven't looked into i haven't even thought about why we're using an iframe but that's besides the point, then what we can do, we can take this generate URL, we can come to our other component. And with the beauty of everything, we can replace completely everything use this hook. Why is this not working? Why can I not import use generate URL? Can I import I can import it just like this. That's fine. Get rid of this. And now we have the same code as we had before our component is now under 20 lines of code, our survey component is under 20 lines of code, we can even maybe even reuse this whole iframe thing, right, we could do this. And we've done it all with the help of a custom hook that allows us to extract common reusable logic into a custom hook and then import it and use it wherever we need. And really, that's kind of like the entire app, there's not that much more to it, everything is in this components folder, which again, should be separated into pages and components. But as you can see here, there's not that many components, we have an analytics dashboard, which I haven't looked at. But again, it's also very simple, right? This is an application that is still in development. So I'm not expecting too much from it. But I really hope that the things that I was able to to give you thus far are helpful and that you're actually going to implement them, especially since I'm going to turn this now into a PR and submit it to you. So there you go. That was the code review. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, you can subscribe right here. If you want to watch another video of mine, I'm sure there's one here on the screen. It's super, super useful. If you want me to personally review your code, maybe even make a PR with some changes to suggest, I would highly recommend that you join the discord. It's the first thing in the description. I would really check it out if I were you. Otherwise, Thank you so much for watching. My name is Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions, and I will see you next time. Ciao, ciao.